Hello and welcome to this special edition of Cronkite Sports Live. I'm Troy Lynch, joined by Blaine McCormick, and we've got a jam-packed show to fill you in on everything SLC. That's right, Troy, and in the next few minutes, we'll go an in-depth look on each of the tournament teams, hearing from players and coaches around the conference and their thoughts headed into the weekend. But before we go anywhere, let's check out the bracket. Now what you see here was up in the air until last Saturday when the Chapman Panthers edged out UC Santa Barbara for that top spot in the north. Looking at the south, that number two and three spot was undecided until the Sun Devils upset the Arizona Laxcats, pushing them into the two spot and Arizona out of playoff contention and UNLV snagging that last spot. The number one spot in the south was locked up by the Grand Canyon Lopes. That's right, Manny Rapkin's squad secured the top SLC spot again this year but it was no easy road to their first round bye. GCU, the reigning national champions, started off their season against the unranked Utah Valley Wolverines. GCU gets the tying goal from Drew Zadig to force overtime, but it would be Utah Valley that would pull away with the upset victory on a breakaway goal. GCU loses this game 11 to 10. Next game would be a triple overtime with Cal Poly, but they edged out a victory in that one with another close one, this time a rematch of the 2015 MCLA National Championship, but GCU proved despite their opening loss, they were for real, taking down the top-ranked CU Buffs, but the two-game win streak would turn into a two-game losing streak with an upset loss to the Colorado State Rams and the Boston College Eagles, both of which were at home. The Lopes had smooth sailing in conference play, though. They have not lost a game since March 4th, with only one close call with the Arizona Lax Cats. For more, we send it over to GCU head coach Manny Rapkin. It's an exciting time here at Grand Canyon University for the lacrosse team. I'm joined by head coach Manny Rapkin of the defending champs and Eli Sason, a senior defensive midfielder. Now you guys are going to be the number one seed for the South in the SLC tournament. But first, I want to talk about the season as a whole. Finished nine and three with those three losses coming early on. Was it kind of just a championship hangover, or was there a deliberate change you made to finish the rest of the season so strong? I think all teams have to find their identity. Uh, it took us a little bit longer than uh, than most, um, and I'm sure you know the championship had something to do with it. But uh, although we returned a number of players, we graduated seven All-Americans, so uh, I'm sure that had a big part of it. And really, is finding the right chemistry. Um, and narrowing your focus down as you move through the season. And with that new chemistry, you guys went on a huge win streak, won the last seven, including going 4-0 in the conference. Now, Eli, you and the other seniors have only lost one game to a conference foe in the regular season, your time here. What does it mean to be so dominant in the SLC? Um, you know, it's just it's a great feeling. It's, it's blessed, you know, coach put together a great group of guys. Um, and you know, we play for each other. Uh, it's like a lot of off the field, on the field chemistry, um, and like you want to do it for your brother right next to you. And with those wins, the last one over San Diego State, a 12-11 win on the road, it was one of the closest games you guys had in a while. What were some takeaways you got from that headed into postseason play? Um, you know, you can't underestimate anybody. You got to come out hitting, because uh, every, every team's going to give us their, their best game. And with that, the SLC is definitely Tough conference. You guys have some extra time to prepare with the bye. Head coach Manny Rapkin, Eli Sason, good luck in practice this week, you guys, and Thank congrats you. You. for Cronkite Sports. I'm Catherine Fitzgerald here at GCU. And moving to the north, let's take a look at the Chapman Panthers. The Panthers head into their first round bye as not only number one in the SLC, but in the MCLA. With an undefeated 16-0 record, it's safe to say the Chapman Panthers are the favorite heading into the playoffs. Chapman secured their spot as the number one seed last weekend, making it look easy against UC Santa Barbara in a battle for that top spot. The Panthers took that game 15-8, earning themselves a first round bye in the playoffs. They've been dominant across the field with a 152 goal differential, only allowing 88 goals in 16 games and nodding 240 into the back of the net themselves. Led by head coach Dallas Hartley, Chapman will be making its sixth consecutive appearance in the SLC tournament. They look to take the SLC championship back into 2011 and became the eventual MCLA champions as well, but haven't had a conference championship since. This is the first season going into the playoffs undefeated, however. In an interview with Chapman campus newspaper, The Panther, defender Regan Kelly said, we realize it's far from over. Chapman lacrosse has always had talented players. The difference between this year and the years past is the chemistry we as a team have on and off the field. 
Team chemistry is something that takes time to develop, and this year it all just came together. Coach Dallas Hartley also took to Twitter for his gratitude on the season, saying, this 2016 team is a pleasure to be around. The winning helps, but it's just a bunch of unselfish men who want to play for each other. No one on the current Chapman roster has been a part of a championship squad, but hey, they've never been undefeated either. The record shows undefeated, but that record doesn't show two of Chapman's almost slip-ups. Early in the season, the Panthers took on the then number four Cougars from BYU and the number three CU Buffs soon after. Both one goal overtime victories. And we'll take you to the field right now. Look at this, Junior Brent running down the field, got some wheels on him, and his shot is fast as well, sending in the tying goal against the Cougars. And only moments later, this time, another Panther. He will get the game-winning goal. Connor Riley barely squeezing it in, trying to get the quick stick, hands up, hugs all around. You can see the disappointment on BYU. And the hugs would continue for the Chapman Panthers as we take it now to their home stadium where they played Colorado. And a tying goal by none other than Simon Jenkins. Look at this, going downfield, forces it in and forces the overtime period. And goalie Gus Gradinger was doing his part as well, saving the game with only 20 seconds left. And he's got the quick stick to save it, sends it down the field, and Chapman gets away onto the other side of the field, buries one in the back of the net for the winning goal of a score of 13 to 12. The Panthers able to play late into crunch time, but haven't had too much. Chapman only had three games this season where they won by less than five goals, practically blowing out the rest of their opponents. And you look at that goal differential too, 152 goals to the Panthers 240, only 88 against, scoring more than 10 in all but one game. This team making it clear they deserve that number one spot atop the MCLA polls. Chapman a first round bye, but let's get to what action is to come over the weekend, and that's Arizona State hosting USC. Arizona State is no stranger to the conference playoffs, earning a bid for the seventh consecutive year. After a coaching turnover in the offseason, assistant coach Todd McRobbie took the reins of the team, leading the Sun Devils to a 6-5 overall record, but a 3-1 conference record which was good enough to clinch home field advantage for game number one of the playoffs. And it will be the University of Southern California heading to the desert for their first appearance in the SLC tournament. And they come in as the underdog. The Trojans are the only unranked team in the SLC playoff picture, clinching a spot in their final matchup of the regular season, where they took down rival UCLA in dramatic fashion, winning not only that game, but the number three seed as well. And these two teams aren't strangers heading into Sunday's matchup. They faced off early this season in the Pac-12 shootout, a game where the men of Troy were outplayed in just about every category, falling to the Sun Devils 11-4. But since then, we caught up with USC's general manager, and this is what he had to say on the season. The USC club program has come a long way in just four years since we were reinstated into the SLC. We are proud of the way our freshmen and sophomores have developed this year and along with our junior and senior leadership. We are looking forward to competing in the SLC at the highest level. It is, indeed, a new era in USC men's lacrosse. The Trojans will have a chance for redemption and upset the Sun Devils this Sunday in Glendale on Arizona State University's West Campus. Opening faceoff starts at 1 p.m. Pacific time, and you can catch all of the action on Cronkite Sports. And to the other first round game, this one between UC Santa Barbara and UNLV. UCSB was seven goals away from securing a first round bye in the playoffs, losing to the top ranked Ch Chapman Panthers. The Gauchos struggled this season out of the gate, dropping their first two games but finishing with a 9-4 overall record. UNLV will head to the coast with the worst overall record in the SLC South, but their two division wins were enough to notch a spot in the postseason, leaving the Rebels' playoff dreams in the hands of Arizona State, who went on to beat the Wildcats, pushing U of A out of playoff contention and the Rebels in. They feel pretty confident. I mean, one thing that my team does have is chemistry. They've all been playing together, the majority of them except one, since middle school. That's one thing we have going for us is chemistry and uh, and a lot of heart. And right now one of our players got hurt, so we're only our, we, we're literally down to 14 guys. So playing a team like UCSB, which I believe they have 38 or 40 roster guys, is uh, quite a challenge and they're a good team. So we, we welcomed a, uh, a pretty dynamic freshman class this year that uh, really added to the overall competition level and the energy and practice and uh, you know, really been able to give us some good quality.
quality depth and, and um, you know, really push the team forward. Now these two teams saw each other early in the season, but they've also had a handful of common opponents. The stats in these games favor the Gauchos. A plus 49 goal differential against UNLV's negative makes it easy to say UCSB is favored. But until these two teams see each other, there's no telling who the victor will be. That game also start at one o'clock, and you won't be able to catch this one live, but be sure to stay with us on Cronkite Sports. We'll do our best to keep you with up-to-date scores from Santa Barbara. Well, it's six teams, five games, two weekends, and one champion. It's win or go home for the best teams across the Southwest, but before they got here, they went through what was quite the unpredictable season. Teams moved up and down the conference standings until the last weekend of the season. We turn now to the SLC Game of the Week crew for a look at this week-by-week -week journey to the tournament. Gotta love the commentary. Great stuff all season long from Malone and the rest of the SLC crew. We look forward to seeing what's to come for the tournament games. And great games to come as well. And questions to be answered. Will Chapman remain undefeated? Could UCSB come back to redeem themselves against Chapman? And what about the Trojans of USC? Will the unranked underdog of the tournament come ready to play in the desert? Troy, give me your thoughts. We're gonna have to break this down because we both have different finals. However, I do think we do. We have GCU in the finals, mm -hmm. both of us. Okay, yep. so let's say GCU, because I agree GCU is gonna beat UCSB, but GCU, Chapman, what are your thoughts? I think Chapman is gonna take away the victory in this one too. Wow, I'm, I'm saying my goodness. I'm saying they're no going all the way. No faith in the SLC no South, Blaine. No faith in the <laughs> SLC South. This is the year of the North. Wow. And we're not talking about the Civil War. We're talking about <laughs> MCLA. Okay. And I think Chapman goes, uh, uh, goes with the win on this one. I mean, they just look too good right now. And I think that game against Arizona State is gonna be crucial. I don't see Arizona State as a clutch fourth quarter team because three of their losses have been within one goal. Right, and I, I have to agree with you that all these teams are really competitive. Yeah. I respect your decision, but I don't necessarily have the same thought process You got the you. Lopes? I got the Lopes okay. taking on the Sun Devils for a rematch for the SLC Championship. Last year it was GCU who took it. I'm saying they're gonna take it again. Earlier in the season, GCU beat the Sun Devils by five on the Sun Devils territory, and they look like the national championship team that we saw last year. It was a very close game, and that's what I'm predicting again, but however, I do think GCU will repeat as SLC champions. Well, with this bracket show, we get, definitely have some disagreements, have some agreements, right? but I think it's gonna be like March Madness. It might get busted too. April, you never know. April's been almost as crazy, if not crazier, than March. It's been absolutely insane. We never know who's gonna win in the MCLA. Yeah. And only time will tell what will happen. Stick with us on CronkiteSports.com for up-to-date reports on the tournament. From all of us here at the Walter Cronkite Sports Network, it's been our pleasure to bring you a look into the SLC tournament. He's Troy Lynch. I'm Blaine McCormick. Thank you for joining us. And just remember, keep on shooting.